Okay, let's get started. So, first of all, thank you everyone for uh, immediately responding to my questionnaire. So, as we still have about 100 plus people to uh, fill in, I think it's uh, clear that there's quite a few people that want to also have an exam after September the 10th. So I will basically discuss this and um, tell uh, the persons from the examination office so they can already start planning for the second event, so to say. Um, now, please don't worry about it. There will be uh, an exam on the 25th of August for sure. It's just that we have two gigantic rooms booked for that one. Um, so the reason why we have this questionnaire is to make sure that we don't you know, occupy both. In this case, I think we can assume that we can give one back uh, for other exams, for instance, and that we have to plan for larger rooms um, after the 10th of September. Right, so as we, uh, as the, that is going on, and as you're um, filling in your, your preferences, let's start sharing something else. Um, maybe we, uh, let's do this over here. Okay. So um, this is the last session, the last question and answer session that we have. Um, if you have questions that you haven't emailed me yet, then please use the, the chat. Um, you can send it to everyone. I will read it uh, for sure. And then I will basically try my best uh, to answer that question. Um, there have been quite a few questions about the exam. Uh, I think uh, what you just saw kind of answered that. There will be two exams, um, that is for sure. One exam will be as planned before on the 25th of August. The other exam will be later than the 10th of September, but that has to be planned still. Um, so that, that, that's the, the outcome of that discussion. Um, then there have been quite a few questions still about what type of questions we get at the exam. So that's why I started now to, you know, start preparing a couple of very simple examples. Now, I'll write this over here so that uh, it's not only said, but also written. So there are five things that are really, really needed for the exam that you really need to know. And the background here is that I, I mean, this is, this course is called Introduction to Programming in C and C++. Um, and later when you um, go and apply for a job, anywhere um, you can use this on your CV to say I have followed this course and I do know C or C++. If this company is uh, serious about this then they will uh, test you and those tests are the type of tests that I will also more or less um, have here at least the simpler ones depending on where you apply if you apply to Google or Facebook or uh, Microsoft I bet the, the, the first test will be like this, but the second test or the third test will be a little bit more difficult. But um, if you claim to know C and C++, then there are certain basic things you really do need to know. And in my experience, the first question that people tend to ask is a very simple one, like um, create a Hello World program. Um, and the knowledge or the, the, the required knowledge for knowing what type of uh, library you need to include, or which namespace you need to use, or which parts of a namespace you need to use, are not the most important parts. And it's just about the syntax. How do you uh, create an executable, or how do you create the main function? You know, what, what, what does this mean, a main function? And being able to create a main function is something that is definitely necessary. The fact that it returns an integer, typically, um, means that you also have to return something, that uh, the function is something that could take parameters, in this case, none. Um, that there's this compound statement following the function, which you know, tells you what type of statements are required for uh, this executable, etc. So that is the first thing that people tend to ask. And surprisingly, many people that have um, expertise in C and C++ on their CV cannot even answer this. So uh, a simple hello world um, is maybe not the, the thing that you immediately um, can respond to because you don't know that you know, IO stream is the library you need to add, for instance, or C out is way to to exit uh, to um, print something on the console. But much more important, I think, is the fact that many people don't remember anymore how to define a main function in C. 
Um, and, and that is something that is, I think, really, really necessary. Now, there are three, no, I said five things that you really need to know. And the first thing is really um, dealing with variables. So the, uh, creating a variable, as you see down here, you know, that, uh, that you can do something with, uh, that you can initialize, that you can deal with, is I think the first thing you definitely need to know. The fact that there are integers, as you see here, but there are many others like characters, booleans, um, floating points, variables, etc. Um, so I think this is, this is something that you definitely have to know. And the fact that variables can be extended to classes as well, of course, so that you include over here something that um, allows you to define a, cl a class, like we, we've seen already cat, for instance, that just like you have an integer, you can also say we have a cat. And we call this uh, a certain name, uh, we call it usually Frisky, for instance, and that you have then, you can just create it as such for a default constructor, or you can call it with you know, certain parameters, like the age and the weight, etc. The fact that uh, this needs to be present uh, is definitely, I think, a must. So that is the first thing, creating variables and perhaps also initializing and um, dealing with those variables, the fact that you had for integer, for instance, operators, that you can divide that, uh, that variable in two, for instance, or multiply it by five, et cetera. So that is the first type of question I will definitely ask in the exam, or I could also combine certain questions, but that I think is really important. And the second thing is loops, dealing with loops, and also if statements. So, and usually I try to combine both because that is kind of the core part of many algorithms. The fact that you do things uh, repeatedly, um, and then depending on how these things are defined, you can use either a do while loop or a while loop or a for loop. Um, and depending on, um, and, and that makes you no know, lives easier if you know the difference between those three, for instance. And the fact that you can use an if then test or, or if uh, test. Um, so basically that uh, you can create something that tests for a certain thing, you know, in relation with those variables usually. So that is the second thing that definitely will be present at the exam. And the third thing um, that uh, is uh, really required is the use of functions. So this is the first or the basic way of uh, partitioning pieces of code so that you can put functions, for instance, later on in different uh, source files so that you don't have to stack everything into the same file, but also that functions can call each other, that you can have recursive functions, for instance, but also that functions can be used for multiple uh, uh, things that you can somehow abstract. Uh, that is the third thing that is really important. And the fourth thing that is really important is um, the use of pointers and references at the same time. So um, that is usually the hardest part. So because in C and C++ pointers are not the most easy concepts to grasp and therefore I put a lot of, I think, accents on understanding what happens with a pointer, the fact that you have this memory space in which you, when you have variables, you reserve pieces in memory, but if you have then a pointer, you can actually point, you have another piece of memory that points to, for instance, those variables or something that you can create at runtime. Um, so that is also quite important. And then finally, classes. Um, and classes is similar to the variables, the way, you know, how you define the classes, and there we've seen many concepts. Some of those are really important. Others are not that important. So the fact that you um, know that if a class member function, for instance, does not change data members, that you can then put const after that, so you know so that you have a constant member function. Uh, that, is, that is nice to know, but it's not the most critical part. Um, and like that, we've seen many other things that are really um, nice to know, but uh, critical, I think, is the way you define a class. You know, what is public, what goes private typically, um, and if you have inheritance, what it means if you inherit a class from another class. You know, what can you access from that other class? If it's the private or is it the protected part or, or is it the public part? Those things are quite important, which kind of... Um, uh, connects to all the four other things over here, of course. 
So these are the five things I tend to definitely ask in the exam. And uh, some of the questions are really uh, programmed on paper, like write on paper a program that does this. And some of them are try to predict what will be written in the console. And that's what we'll, or that, that I'll quickly do today because um, there were some questions about references and um, pointers as well. So I will kind of uh, dedicate this time to exactly doing that. So we can have here a variable. We initialize it to seven. And if we output this, I think everybody knows that the output will indeed be seven. So you will write um, a seven on the console. Now we've seen, let's start with uh, references. So we've seen that we can actually create a reference let's call it variable two, um, which we can initialize once. And where it's important to know also that if we have a, a reference, we can uh, assign this only in the initialization. And later, we can't do anything with that reference anymore. We can change the value of this reference. So we, if we basically say, um, we go for nine, for instance, here, um, then that is possible. Uh, but the reference itself is now fixed. Uh, it has been, uh, so, and, and we call this uh, an alias, um, in this case for variable one uh, or var one. So in that case, we have two uh, 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 variables that we defined and they, they have exactly the same value. So if we would uh, execute this, what happens here is that um, you create a piece of memory uh, for holding four bytes, therefore one integer, and uh, you initialize this piece of memory to hold the value seven. Then you create a second piece, which you call variable two, which is exactly the same or holds exactly the same as variable one, not as a copied value. So you don't take this seven and copy it somewhere else in memory, but it's exactly the same memory location that you have here. So now you have two variables, variable one, variable two, and if you change one or the other, then both are changed because they have, uh, they, re they refer to the same memory spot. So if I now do var, var two equals nine, so I assign the value nine to uh, var two in this case, then also var one will become nine. So if I output this, you will see that it's nine. I can actually do this quickly. Um, so, See, so I compile and I immediately execute, and you see um, the output is nine. So uh, var one also changed into a nine. So I think this is really important to know already. Um, what we can also do, and this is very similar, um, we can do this with a pointer. So we have um, a pointer now that we assign oops, to um, the to what uh, uh, var1 is pointing to, and there we use the reference of var1. So as you can see here, we basically do exactly the same as here, except that this is a pointer. And we've seen that there are lots of commonalities between reference and pointers, um, except that the only, I mean, the big difference is that references can only be initialized, and then afterwards you can't assign, can't assign anything to a reference, the thing with the ampersand over here. Okay, so this is, exactly the same. So now we have a third piece or a third thing reserved somewhere in memory where we point to an integer. So we have a, a, a pointer to an integer and we make that point to what uh, var1 is holding. And this is what we had in the last two weeks as uh, something that we practiced for. And then we can, for instance, uh, do some things with a function, so we can, uh, let's start with a function, oh, it's called fun. Um, not that it's fun, but you know, it's for a function. Uh, we have a, a, a variable that we um, have as a parameter of that function. And we can, for instance, say this is um, a, a pointer. So what we want to do in the end is we want to, um, well, we can also output this since we return something. Um, we have our function fun, and we, for instance, can return uh, our third variable because that is a pointer. And we, we basically have a pointer here um, that we also refer to in this function. <clears throat> and then we, for instance, can do, uh, we can return um, this, uh, this pointer. And what we've seen is that this is not um, uh, 
we are not copying things here. We're basically exactly returning what uh, var3 is pointing at, or the exact pointer that we have here. So what we return is not a copy, it's the exact thing. Um, and well, we, when we then change something here, and this is the thing that is completely different from what, how we use uh, functions in the beginning. Um, how shall we change this? So let's divide it by two. So remember that you can do this. So that means um, the thing, the, the, the referencing here, the pointer var. So we basically have um, what var is pointing to. We divide by two and assign this again to var. And that's what this operator over here means. I hope you remember that. Um, and then we can uh, see what happens then. Um, so what happens here is um, you put var3, which points at the 7 over here, into our function. The 7 is over here and divided by 2. Now, the, only, the other thing is that uh, we have an integer. So um, we do here what's this integer uh, division, right? So make sure that you uh, are aware of this. So you divide this integer by two, meaning that um, if this integer here is nine in that case, it will return four, not four and a half, because um, you put this into a variable that holds an integer, not a float. And that's another thing I could do, for instance, on the exam. And then um, if we execute this, we see that we will both, so basically the, the function returns four, because that is what happens here. But then we also have changed the actual um, thing that var3 is pointing to, uh, meaning 9 in this case, because we changed the 7 to a 9 via var2. And when we pass var3, which points at exactly the same, we still have 9. So if we um, execute this as before, uh, we have 44. No, that is. What is going on here? Okay, I mean, I should do this. Um, and then we have two times the four, right? So we print, first of all, what the function returns, and second of all, um, what really changed. In this case, all three of these changed at the same time. Okay. So th this, is, this is something that I think is quite important to understand. If you get this, then you get, in my opinion, uh, in terms of syntax, the, the most important parts of C, um, and therefore also C++. I mean, C++ is kind of using all of this, um, and for that you just have to uh, learn by heart a bit more syntax. Um, and for me, those type of things are not that important. The fact, for instance, that inside a class you have this, this pointer to your availability, um, or other things, I think, are for me less important. Uh, so for point four here, pointers and reference, I think this is really what matters. And of course, what we can do here um, is we can pass a, an actual variable. So we can pass var1 again. So in this case, we pass the seven. Um, if we had this over here, we would do copying. Uh, and if um, this var would have been changing, so then we would have to do all of this here. Um, then we would be constantly copying things. So we would copy uh, the 7 into var1, although that has changed into a 9 by this reference over here. So this 9 here, when we enter this function, is copied to a second piece in memory over here. We divide this 9 by 2, get 4, and we return this 4. But uh, this original var1 over here has not changed. This is another thing that is really important to know if you don't use a point or a reference. The alternative that we've seen is that you can use a reference over here, right? So in that case, we can just leave things the way they are. And, um, and then in that case, var is indeed changing because we basically uh, passed here by reference. Okay, yes, Luca, you can talk. Thank you. Um, I have a question regarding to line 31 because mm -hmm. you like, for the previous example you had, um, why are you not passing the variable three with the star um, towards the into the function? But uh, for instance, for uh, in line twenty-one, you are using the star variable. Uh, 
Um, no, so basically, if so, var three over here is a pointer. So if we pass a pointer, then then I don't need to add this uh, this star over here anymore. Um, if I want to pass the value that this pointer is passing to, then I need to add the star. So if this would be the case, so like this, it would also be okay. So this would um, this would get the same output. Yeah. Uh, no, because here I am I am again copying. So basically, what I'm doing here is I pass the value that var three is pointing at to the function. This is nine in this case, and it was seven in the beginning, then nine over here, because var three is, um, is pointing at exactly the same memory space as uh, var one. And uh, we are here dereferencing this, which means that we are then passing the value that uh, this thing is pointing at. So we're, in that case, what is going on here is we basically copy this into this new integer var, which is in that case divided by two and returns, but this does not uh, change what, what var3 is pointing at. If, if we have a pointer over here, so if, uh, I, yeah, I've changed it now so many times, I don't remember anymore, but if you really want a pointer, then we also need to um, uh, dereference that point, so to, to be able to do this division by two. Um, if I would do this, then I would have here basically the memory location that I divide by two, which would not make any sense at all. Um, and I would have to do it really like this. So, and to make sure, also there, I'm not entirely sure whether this is the exact, exact correct thing, is I use the braces here to make sure that first we're the referencing var, so we have this value, and then we divide by two. Okay, but let in in line twenty, we still need the star uh, to dereference the past variable three in this case. Yes, exactly. No, I mean basically this here is um, explaining that we have a pointer to an integer that we have here um, as an, as a parameter, which var three is. You know, here we know that var three is a pointer to an integer. So. so Line 20 is just for, um, yeah. For telling the function or telling or defining the function in such a way that we know that the argument for this function is a pointer to an integer, not an integer itself. So it's actually not dereferencing in line 20. No, no. This is, this is, yeah, this is very important. And, um, and, and this is, I think, um, a really important thing to note here that um, what happens uh, when you uh, define a variable, which is what here happens. You define here a variable with the name var, and this is a pointer to an integer. This is completely different to what happens afterwards when you, for instance, assign things to this uh, variable var. Right? So th this is indeed very important. So over here, I mean, this is something that in C in the, in, in the early days was uh, completely different, and therefore in C, you, as we do here, in fact, always the first um, list all the variables you're using in a function, for instance, and then you do, uh, then you uh, then list the statements of what you do with those. So you always have to start with all the, all the variables and then do this. So in C++, this is not the case anymore. We could just happily do another uh, variable initialization here. Um, but in C, uh, you really had to uh, make the real distinction. What is where do we define what variables we have in our program and what do we do with those variables? So as you, as you aptly say there, basically what happens in the definition of this function where we say what variables do we have as parameters of our function, these are basically the definitions of the variables, not what uh, this variable does. And that is for the pointer, um, I think a, a very tricky distinction that you really have to know. So there, there really is the difference between integer pointer var, var and just var, actually. Yes, yes. And that's a huge difference. So this is yeah. basically you reserve somewhere in memory an integer, and you name it var. Um, over here, you have uh, a name called var, which is uh, reserved somewhere in memory as well. Uh, but this is a pointer to an integer. I mean, I would, I would um, suggest to really look at last uh, week's Q&A sessions video, 
uh, because then you, I mean, where I was writing all of this on, on this piece of paper, I think this conceptual model is really important to know. So I think this is something that um, I would really recommend doing. I mean, essentially, if you have this mental model of pointers and references, it is not that hard. Um, it, is, it is essentially, you know, um, you have this scrap memory, like a piece of paper where you can reserve things. And you have these three type of things with dealing with this memory and reserving a piece of space there. And for each thing that you reserve, you can say what type you're reserving, an integer or a float or a boolean. And that depends, and that kind of dictates how many uh, cells in the memory you reserve and how you interpret this. And that you can then give values. And then you can link things between those two or three. And that is, I think, the, the basic, the most basic thing that you need to know here. And, um, and when, coming back to my earlier um, uh, aim of this course is uh, in you know, interviews, for instance, when you apply for uh, a position L, uh, somewhere and you basically say, uh, I know C and C++, and these are the first things they will ask for, and especially pointers and references are tricky, but once you know this, I think you will hardly forget this. So uh, I can only recommend you to look at the, the, ex the exercises we did there and you know, e examples like this one. So of course I will um, put ex uh, this example six for a question online as well. Um. I, I just lost um, the connection, so I did not get the, the last part. But um, I also have another question, like, because you, you already said, like, references and pointers are quite similar. So why exactly would I use pointers instead of uh, line 27, where I can just use a reference? Or is the benefit for pointers? Um, because of the difference. So the difference is that pointers you can still assign later on. So I can still say over here var3 equals um, and, and you, 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 you assign this over here, for instance. Um, and this is something you can do for var2. So you can't say the, the reference that I have here I'm going to change um, into something, whatever this something is over here. And for particular purposes this has um, big consequences. So, so therefore, um, that is the, the real difference. And that is also why, for instance, I mean, when we have um, this over here, the nicer way of dealing with this is using a reference. This is, the, I think, one of the, the last things I said for chapter seven um, is because here we can just use var as, as a, a variable the way we had it. So this is nice and clean. Um, and we don't have this misconception that is, um, that, that we actually are changing the var over here, the, the, the var, um, in this case, var three that we have here, right? So, well, no, actually this is wrong. So we should have var one, for instance, um, or var two, for that matter. So var two is an actual value, like it is nine in this case, or var one would have been nine here in this case as well. And we're passing to this function, but this function is actually changing um, this variable because the argument here is a reference, not an actual integer. So in this case, this little change over here makes all the difference. And so try this out. I think um, this is probably the, the way for you to verify whether what you think is true is true. And I think a simple example like this is easy to make. Um, try this out to see if your conceptual model indeed matches that what, um, what is the case here. Um, but can you uh, please tell me, like, is it more efficient now doing it with the reference? Yes, and it's also clear. So for, for passing, so if your intention is to have a function where what you pass to this function is changed, and so we here we pass a variable one, and we pass this to the function, and we don't want uh, to just pass it and it doesn't get changed. We want, you know, like for instance, with the swap example that uh, we mentioned throughout the lecture. So there with swap, we really want to change the two uh, values of the variables that you pass uh, in that function. Here we might do this as well. So our function is in this case, hopefully a function that changes the value of R1 here conceptually on this line 31. And the only thing we need to do here is in this case, um, um, have this reference 
um, for our, our variable here or our parameter. And this will do it. If this is not the case, if you just want to uh, divide var1 by 2 and return this, but you don't want to change var1 or the contents of var1 over here, then this is the way to do it. So this is a very small thing that changes, but it, has, it makes a big difference. So this over here will return um, 4 over here and 9 over here. If you add the reference uh, over here, then you will have 4 over here. That's what fun returns, the function returns. And you have here, um, so if you with the reference, you have also var1 changed. So also there you have then 4. And this makes all the difference, of course. So here, um, this is a nicer way of doing that. And of course, there are many other uh, reasons why pointers are important. Um, and that's what we've seen, for instance, with the new um, keyword that you can at one time with a pointer create a new piece of uh, or a new structure into memory. Um, the fact that uh, an array is basically uh, a pointer to the first element of uh, that thing that you reserve into memory, that those are, that's all pointers. And so this, this is another distinction here. Reference is a way to do things in a cleaner way. For instance, and I think this is the, the, the most important thing that we've seen, um, passing things through a function. There, a reference is a nice, clean way. Okay, there's another question. So when it comes to pointers, this is everything we need to know for exam? Yes. Will there be a task that is similar to this one? Yes. <laughs> so for both uh, questions, yes. So, the, and this is, I think, what I hope everybody of you will be able to reproduce. So if I have this type of, um, of question, I will uh, tend to, in the exam, return a lot more. So there will be a, a lot more things being returned. And I mean, half of those will be very trivial things like learning what an operator does, is, is one thing that I tend to ask. Uh, learning, you know, how assignment works is another thing. So if this was far one, for instance, that's, you know, how we assignment works. Um, and then the trickier bit, which is unusually a third or half of the points, is really going the understanding of references and or pointers. So this is definitely something that I will check and, um, and that I hope that you will be able to reproduce. So and this is, I think, the level at which I hope you will be able to understand what pointers and um, references can do. I will not um, um, ask you to reproduce anything, for instance, um, with you know dynamic arrays, where you basically can resize on arrays or um, or create an array of uh, a certain size. I think this is something that um, we've seen in the uh, in the exercises. Uh, but I think if you understand this, I think this is the most important. Uh, professor? Yes? Uh, if I do the same things with string, can be it's uh, eligible, let's say? Uh, no. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to get you away from using libraries and understanding the basic concepts of what, is, what those libraries really represent for you. Um, and this goes, I mean, it's a good question. So basically this goes for strings, uh, but you could do exactly the same for a vector, for instance, or, um, or a, a matrix in a way. I mean, so, I mean, this is something that we haven't seen, you know, STL, for instance. Um, there are concepts that allow you to immediately use a vector or a matrix um, or a, a linked list or a stack, you know, lots of the things that help you in programming certain things, or a database for that matter. But the, on the lowest level, what, um, what those things use is basically exactly the things that I've just described. And I think that is the most important thing to know. So I will never ask you to, um, uh, to know by heart uh, what, so that you basically have to include a string or that you have to include a certain library for um, accessing the random, the rand function, or these type of things. So those are all things that I, I mean, it's, uh, I don't expect you to learn by heart that there are certain libraries that provide you certain functions or certain classes for that matter, or objects. 
Um, and for exactly that reason, I will, for instance, already provide this IO stream and the C out and end line so that you at least know this and you don't have to know this by heart. But the basic concepts of all the rest, I will expect you to, uh, to know this. And, and I think this is something that we've done throughout the semester. I think uh, if you, in an exercise, needed to know what library you needed to use, then I would have provided this for you. Um, and you should not you know, learn this by heart or do this by yourself. OK, thank you. You're welcome. All right, any other questions? Um, the question is about the last exercise. Uh, so why did we need the blank word game.cpp with just a link to the header file? This is a conceptual thing. So you're absolutely right. We did not really need that. Um, however, it allows us, for instance, to um, have, I mean, we basically learned in this lecture, if you want to abstract certain things and use those as your own modular set of functions, or later also a class that you provide to yourself, but also other programmers, then you split this up in a header file and a CPP file. The header file where you define what you're providing, like you have the function definitions, for instance, and the CPP file where you implement that, where you, you know, list the statements that uh, define that function or that define the, 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 the member functions of a class, for instance. Um, so for the last exercise, we did just have this empty CPP file where we include this header file and that's it. Because the, the header file was very, very basic. So all what we needed in this header file is a class where we don't uh, implement that much. We basically define, um, and then the reason why we have this uh, class is really to allow you to inherit a dictionary and the dictionary consisting out of several words. Um, so you don't have to type in all those words, for instance, but also to deal with inheritance. Okay, the next question is what is the difference when const stands at the beginning and at the end? I assume this means uh, for, for instance, a member function in a class. So when you have const at the end, it means that this function is not changing the member variables that belong to a certain class. So, um, and for that, I can share uh, our last, or the last thing that I saw for the, for the lecture. So here we have this um, cat implementation again, where we have over here the header file for the cats here the CPP file for the cat over here. And here we have our executable that uses our cat uh, class so that we can here construct, for instance, an array of, of, of cats. And that's what we did. Or we create an, a normal cat over here via a certain constructor. Now, if we look over here at the cat definition of the, of the cat class, then we have here a const uh, one. So, in this case, we have a member function called get age, which makes sense because we have an age. Oh, actually, this is a silly thing because we have this birth year. We change that uh, from age to birth year. But if we want to um, get a certain piece of information from our cat class, we're not going to change any of those data members over here. Um, and that is the, the whole deal here with the const. It is not um, uh, completely uh, required for this, but it's a nice thing because if, for instance, later a developer comes and starts messing with our codes and goes here to get age over here, right, and it and he starts or she starts to change the word here, for instance, over here, then the compiler will um, give a warning and say, no, uh, somebody defined to get age here as not changing anything uh, in terms of data members of this class, so therefore. Conceptually, something went wrong. So this is the reason why uh, you would have const at the end. If you have const at the beginning, and this is from the lecture, this uh, uh, refers to what you're um, giving back from the function. Um, this is something where we have never seen why this is important. Actually, no, I um, quickly, I think, said this in the lecture. 
But if the, uh, and this is the point, I think uh, this is something that you will not need to know for the exam also. This is also going quite far. The same for the const over here. If you provide this, for instance, in um, an exam question, and you have, for instance, like a get function that does not change, and you add the const over here, and also over here with the implementation, then I will say, yes, this person has understood this concept and that it's great, but it is not necessary. So you won't lose points if you don't do this. And as for the const in the beginning, where you, have, where you um, give back a const integer, um, also that is something that is nice to know, but uh, where I won't, um, for instance, reduce points for the exam. Thank you. Professor, mm -hmm. can you please explain one more time when we write constant, this word at the end? So which parameters now uh, the user cannot change? Uh, these over here. So once you have here in this case uh, for get h constant at the end, that means that this function get h cannot change its birth year, its weight, its name, or its smooth. Now its birth year is a constant anyway. You know, so so that would be so. Uh, I mean, even if you forget this, then you would and you would change this over here. You would not be able to do that because it's a constant. And also there, the compiler would um, would create a problem. But if, for instance, in this function, you would also change the weight of the cat, you know, via the, its weight parameter, or the name, or the mood of the cat, you, it would result in a, in a warning or an error from the compiler. Because this const over here means you can't change any of the data members of the class, it being the birth year, the weight, the name, and the mood of the cat. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, professor, in, in, in the last uh, assignment, you uh, in the H class, you use uh, protected, not uh, protected, maybe destructed with, um, with, I think it was protected or virtual. I see, virtual. virtual, yes. And I want to ask you, it is uh, running auto automatically or it is, uh, I should uh, somewhere use it? Like, no, 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 no. Um, so this is basically um, what is called an interface. Um, also this, okay, so what I will do is I will provide all the slides that I have. So if you saw the beginning of the lecture, I have about, I think, uh, 13 chapters all the way to SDL. Um, and also this is something that is you know, really nice and really cool, but uh, you don't need to know for the exam as well. Um, uh, the same for other things that you might have seen um, in past exercises when dealing with classes. That, for instance, um, if you do, if you have a, a constructor, that you um, in certain cases need to write explicit in front of the constructor, or that's at least what CPP lint uh, tells you to do. Um, also, there to those people that had that occurrence and had that question, um, I explained it to them. But basically, these are things that don't that you don't really need to know. So also there you really, this is an introductory course. And what I hope is that you really um, completely grasp the basic concepts of all of this. The rest is just nice to know syntax. And I think this is something that you then develop when you go a bit in a, into a bit more advanced stage. But I think the most important thing is that you really know the basics. And this is something that I think ha often happens that even the basics are completely lost. And this is something that I, uh, really find it worthwhile. All right, so the next um, question is, uh, many of us are stuck with task two of exercise five. Um, could you give us more hints on how to solve it? Um, I think I, so do, to those that, uh, that mailed me, I gave, I think sometimes uh, quite a few hints. Um, there is another thing, there's several people that have asked me to extend the, the, the deadline for this exercise. And I think I will also do that. So by the end of today, I will make a decision there whether I will extend the deadline or not. Uh, because there are still loads of questions coming um, every hour even um, uh, about uh, this, uh, this exercise. And to make sure that you are able to um, completely solve this, uh, I think I will extend it for a week. So this is something that is upcoming. Um, so if you have a, a, a questions, and please ask me also very specific questions. 
Um, I think most of you already have been asking questions there, or many of you have been asking questions there, and those tend to be really specific about a certain passage. And I think that is where I can really help. If it's something about interpreting um, how the question is meant to be, I can also help, but uh, please be as concrete as possible where you have the problem. Then the next question is um, uh, also related to this last uh, exercise. Are we going to have less points in the last exercise for the style of the codes? So if we construct more things in the main function, um, not entirely sure what that means. Um, it really depends. So the style is something that we have been um, looking at as well. Um, but from a non-critical point, it's the same with indentation. So indentation is really important. And also there, um, there are still some of you, I mean, it's a, a big minority, thankfully, but there's some, still, uh, some of you that are not indenting as they should. And some of you are really not indenting at all. And that is really frightening, I think. Um, because please, indent. I mean, it's not a very hard thing to grasp and it makes your code so much more readable. Um, also for yourself to avoid certain errors. Um, this is still where we get lots of errors happening. And the style of the code is exactly the same. So uh, for, um, uh, for the style of code, I think we won't be very nitpicky and uh, look at, you know, if this happens in one line, for instance, it's not that much of a problem. Um, and also there, the output of CPP lint is used as kind of a hint. And if you, have um, everything correct in CPP lint, that means at least your style of code is actually pretty good. And that is, I think, something that um, is then a definite reassurance for you that um, we are able then to read your code. The other thing that uh, needs to be done, of course, is then the indentation. Okay, any more questions? The bonus part of, ex uh, of the second exercise of the last assignments. Yes, so the bonus part is, I mean, there I had also very, uh, a lot of people asking me this question, but it is in principle quite simple. So if you solve exercise two of the last assignments, which is basically implementing the hangman game, um, you will see that uh, 10 iterations. So after, I mean, if you play it for yourself and you do this 10 times, you will see that this is not that easy. And usually you fail to be successful there. So the question is then try it out for yourself and see how many iterations tend to be necessary uh, for your work. And this is basically me trying you to play the game several times or try, try out your own uh, executable, not just so that it fulfills all the, the, the validation you know, or the check commands that we provide, but it also it makes uh, it into a sensible game. And the more you explain there, the more interesting to me. So that, this is more of an open-ended uh, open question. Um, and there you could actually answer in multiple ways. I'm not going to say that much more, I think, because then I would um, spoil things. But basically, um, the amount of iterations that you need is a certain number you can try this out and then get like a hint towards this number but i hope that some of you also go into the effort of um trying to explain why this is the case um and, and why this or how this could be implemented even so as i said this is a bonus part um but it, it would be i mean the, the more important thing there i think uh, for me would be to get some more insights on how deep you think about the exercises that you have to do. So yes, the next question is, what does bonus mean here? Yes, so if you don't do that, so if you don't provide into the comments of your codes an exp uh, explanation why uh, this 10 is not uh, a probably a, a good number and another number might be correct, then you don't lose any points. On the other hand, if you, for instance, then uh, wrongly indent a few uh, things here and there, and we, uh, or if you don't use indentation, but you have a very good explanation of why uh, this is the case, then you gain points, of course. And yeah, the next question is, should we change the program accordingly? No. So you should just in the comments, for instance, at the end, 
So we will figure out where the comments are, uh, just comment why this is the case. So this is you know, basically a node inside your source code. Um, and it doesn't matter where you put this, you can uh, usually put this, I think we said in the assignment, to put this somewhere at the end, uh, so that we can basically read this and then see whether this makes sense or not. And again, bonus means really bonus. So if you provide this comment, you can basically get extra points. Um, and uh, that way you can, for instance, make up for points that you lose elsewhere in this assignment. Then the last, uh, the, the last, the, the next question is when will the last exercise be up? So uh, there won't be any more exercises. So this is it. Um, so if you count with me, we have basically five exercise assignments with you know, multiple exercises per assignment. Um, and the first one was worth two points. The next four are 10 points. What we're going to do is we're going to take that score and um, scale it up to 50 points. So that means after this exercise it is completely done. Um, and uh, that means that you have basically then uh, half of your uh, score already known uh, once those are um, uh, once those are corrected. And it also means that uh, for the other half, which is the exam, um, you basically also have those 50 points uh, to gain or lose. But hopefully not. Um, yeah, the next question is, is mandatory to appear on the 25th of August? No. So um, we will, with the, the responses that are trickling in now, so we have almost 100. So I mean, we have about half, I think, of the people uh, now responded. And it looks like um, we will have about 20, 30 people so far uh, interested for the 25th and about you know, 80, 90 people uh, for after September 10th. That means we will actually have two dates, first one being August 25th as planned before, um, and then the second one after September 10th. And there we will as soon as we can, you know, um, reply to you with the date and the time and also the place where we're going to do this because this is probably also need or this will need to be done in uh, two bigger rooms. Any more questions? Okay, this doesn't seem to be. So I thank you all for attending this morning. Um, I wish you all the best of luck for the exam, of course. Um, so this was indeed the last question and answer session. Um, I will put a few more notes uh, in Moodle. For instance, you know, providing one PDF with all the lecture slides um, so that you also have all the rest that you um, need to know for the exam. I think uh, we have covered now what you need to know and what not. If you have questions, uh, please email me with those questions. Um, and that is all basically. So after that, we will see each other finally in person, either on the 25th of August or um, in the second half of September, more or less. So thank you for attending and we'll see each other at the exam. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye, take care. Bye -bye. Thank you.